It's been over 20 years since we've seen the Integra and the Acura lineup here in North America. Today I'm going to drive it and tell you if it's been worth the wait. We'll just do a quick walk around of the exterior and then we'll hop in and start driving this front wheel drive performance machine. Starting with the front end, we don't have a bezel around the diamond pentagon grille. Instead, this is the first ever bezel-less or frameless diamond pentagon grille. I think it looks amazing and it flows straight into the jewel eye headlights with this chicane style daytime running light. Down below, we have fog lights that are kind of hidden within this glossy black bottom portion underneath there. You see all the cooling bits for this engine. 18 inch shark gray wheels here on this A-Spec technology package. Continental contacts that are all season tires. We'll see if they're as sticky as let's say the summer tires that we had on the Civic Si. Just gonna take a step back here. There's all sorts of uh, dealer install options that you can get on this vehicle, like the carbon fiber cap to the side mirrors, which they showed us last night, looked pretty cool. But yeah, the Integra is back to a five door, just like it was in 1986 when it came here to the United States for the first time. Every single angle of this vehicle looks pretty good. Even if it gives off a little bit of Civic hatchback vibes, it definitely feels and looks a little bit more sporty and premium. I love the blacked out window trim. Uh, the rear lights look really good. To me, they scream Batman for some reason, not quite sure, but they just look really cool. We do have the repeating of the chicane lights and you can also see Acura typed into the in the inside of that lens there. Integra was on the front bumper. It's also here on the back bumper. The exhaust is purring away underneath this glossy black diffuser at the bottom of the bumper. And yes, we do have parking sensors out back, which is nice. Opening the hood lid, I just uh, scorched my hands a little bit. This thing's so hot, we don't have shocks to lift it up. But you can see a little, little accurate touch here. But it's the same output as the Civic Si, around 200 horse, a little over 190 pound-feet of torque. Of course, this has a six-speed manual. We will be driving the CVT as well today. Fuel economy is crazy. Uh, if you're not pushing this thing to its limits all the time, you should easily be able to get over 35 miles to a gallon with this setup. Now there's no super handling all wheel drive on this Integra. Uh, maybe one day, maybe with the Type S. It's hard to say, I highly doubt it, but it's still the front wheel drive recipe. The vast majority of Integras that we had in the past, there were a few models globally that had all wheel drive, but Honda and Acura sticking to the formula. Man, that's just a beautiful looking hood. So gorgeous. And we need to get underneath this black deck lid spoiler here go over the cargo capacity. I'll put exactly what it is. I want to say it's around 24 cubic feet of space. And this hatchback, which is, I want to say around 10 more cubic feet space more than the Honda Civic Si, which is not a hatchback, just a sedan. We have a large ELS subwoofer back here. ELS sounds awesome in here. There's no spare tire underneath, as you would expect in today's modern age, but it is what it is. Now, folding down the rear seats is actually pretty easy for me to do, even from outside the vehicle here. Um, we have just an enormous amount of space. You have bikes in here, surf, maybe some sort of surfboards, not longboards, but the smaller kind. I'm from Nebraska, I don't know. But it's time to close up shop and get on the road. Driving the 2023 Integra, the rebirth of the Integra. It's been about nine months since this vehicle has been announced, and I am in the foothills outside of, I guess you call them foothills, I'm not quite sure, but the rolling hills outside of Austin, Texas, with the new Integra, and this thing feels awesome. I'm on the top of the stack for the Integra. This is the A Spec technology package. This has all the bips and bobs you can get in it, heads up display, uh, the ELS audio, heated seats, adaptive dampers, which are no longer available on, let's say it's a little brother, the Civic Si. Um, the steering in here feels so good, even in comfort mode. So one of the things about the adaptive dampers <laughs> is they, uh, when you're commuting, when I was driving out to the this countryside on like the the freeway going about 70 
The adaptive dampers do a great job just keeping this vehicle like a more luxurious ride. Oh man, that is a tight turn. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes, we still have we still have the uh, rev hang that we do in the Civic SI and other manual transmission Civics in the lineup. But you know what? It's so smooth still, and it's very rewarding. The gearbox in here is every bit as good <clears throat> as it is in the Civic SI. Uh, we don't have a double wishbone up front, but we do have a multi-link in the back. Uh, struts up front just like the Civic SI. This is supposed to be a little bit longer than that vehicle, a little bit wider, slightly wider track. Squiggly line, that's exactly what this car wants to see. <laughs> We're still in that sport mode with the stiffer dampers. The engine note, there's not much of it here, but still good feedback overall. It's just so smooth. This shifter is one of my favorite on the market right now. It, it feels like a video game and being in the Integra again, almost feels like a video game. I don't think I ever drove any previous generation Integras. And so it feels like a little bit of my childhood coming back to me, idolize, idolizing the Integras in the, in the 90s, the DC2, the Type R. Like, you know, that's one of the big questions is where's the Type S and the Type S not even not even a whisper of it but you know it's coming and i'll have the two liter more than likely from the civic type r but with a nicer interior and i guess we can start talking about the interior but let me just ring this out real quick second gear <laughs> it doesn't have that much power but man is it satisfying you know, and that's one of the reasons why the Civic Si has been so successful in the past, as well as, um, you know, the MX-5 Miata. They're just lightweight cars and, that have a good power to weight ratio. And this vehicle has the best power weight ratio in the entire Integra history, excluding the Type R, of course. Um, so this vehicle comes in at about 200 pounds more with this A-Spec technology package, about 200 pounds more than the Civic Si. So we're talking about 3,100 pounds. I'll put exactly what it is. I don't, I'm not a computer. I don't have the spec sheet in front of me, but it's not that much heavier. And can you feel it? Maybe a little bit, but that's only when you're pushing this vehicle to its limits. And maybe that's also because the, the tires, the, we have all season tires on here and we don't have the summer tires that you can get on the Si, for example. Now heading to the interior as I play with the climate control here, it feels very Honda Civic and that's an amazing thing. That The new interior on the Civic is great. This just takes it to the next level. Uh, we have synthetic leather seats with the suede interior on this technology package. It looks a lot more premium and feels a little bit more premium than the Civic Si once you get outside this dash area because the dash area feels so similar to the Si and you have this additional trim here that is not seen on that vehicle. We have four charging ports in here so if you want to load your buddies up or your family you also have charging ports on the back seat um, and I had good leg room in the back seat just like the Civic Si and this is you know Honda and Acura didn't say hey it's not based on the Civic the Civic's platform, it's based on the small Honda vehicle platform, which also underpins the upcoming HRV. Even though it has the same wheelbase, it is 2% stiffer than the sedan and 5% stiffer compared to the hatchback Civic. And that's just, oh, there's NSX, holy cow. And that's just body rigidity. I'm not talking about, you know, the dampers or anything like that. And this transmission, it's like I said so satisfying but like on the SI it really doesn't like to be hustled that much you really kind of have to be patient to get the shifts just right so the revs drop to match what the uh, the car is really tuned for uh, but now I got a nice turn here a decent amount of body roll it feels like it's a little bit more body roll than the Civic SI that vehicle just felt a little bit more planted uh, than this vehicle okay this says 20 miles an hour I'm gonna throw it in around 40. Oh my gosh, that was not a 20 mile an hour turn. Maybe if you're, and we're in horse country, so maybe if you have a horse trailer, 
That's like worst case. Oh, that, that's where it should be 20 mile an hour. And then the beautiful lake there. Just so smooth and just don't hear much going on in the engine bay, but it's a very smooth and still satisfying experience, even though you're not getting the most raw feedback possible here. Beautiful river. So another pro to this small one and a half liter engine with 200 horsepower and 190 plus pound feet of torque. One of the pros to it in this class is that I've been ringing the hell out of this thing and, I'm, and I've also was idling it for a while and I'm still getting over 31 miles per gallon. On the way up here, it was at 36 miles per gallon and that's me, you know, pushing it through its paces quite a bit. So you trade off a little bit of displacement and power and torque versus some of the larger two liter engines out there on the premium market. And uh, yeah, you, you get rewarded with really good fuel economy here in this vehicle. And going over that rough pavement there, it's still a very smooth experience, even here in the sport mode with the dampers ticked into a, a tighter setting. The steering in here is pretty quick to turn in, no doubt. It's not the stiffest steering. Of course, I've, I always want the steering feel to be pretty darn stiff in a sports car. But, but to be honest, it's a very livable steering feel. And at highway, it's kind of variable gear ratio, so highway speeds, it's kind of soft in the middle. And then when you push it uh, to its limits, it definitely gets tighter the further, the further away you get from the center. I also feel like the road noise in here is noticeably less than the Civic. When I was at highway speed, 70 miles an hour on the Civic Si, it's a very loud car. Thank goodness this isn't nearly as loud. Like I said, you still have a little bit of wind noise coming from this area, and that's probably the most annoying thing, but the road noise is totally acceptable uh, compared to the Civic Si and most of the non uh, premium segment vehicles. Like, yeah, a lot of people like to compare this car to the Mazda 3, and in terms of looks and interior trimmings, you can probably make that comparison, but in terms of ride quality, this thing rides a lot better, uh, and it feels more comfortable on a daily basis. This infotainment is pretty much carried straight over from the top line Civic models, and you do have a wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Um, I have a fully digital MID that's kind of shared from the, like, let's say the Grand Touring Civic. And the ELS system in here is very similar to what we have in other Acura products. I have speakers even above my head, so you get kind of bathed and immersed in this sound. It's not the loudest of systems, but when you crank it to the max, it's very clear, no distortions, and it's a very pleasant listening experience, even when it's cranked 40 out of 40. Going 70 miles an hour on the freeway. So much less wind noise and road noise than the Civic Si. Like this would be a much better commuting car, especially at high speeds. Some of you guys were worried about that because we know that Civic is so loud on the highway as well as most of its competitors like the Corolla and the, the Elantra, for example. But this vehicle, not saying it's like whisper quiet, but man, it's so much of an improvement over the Civic Si on the highway in terms of no noise coming from the wind as well as the road. Safety features in here, just like the Honda Civic Si, are really, really good. The lane tracing in here is excellent. The radar cruise control is good. Just keep in mind, it's a manual. You, you still have to you still have to be pretty aware of what's going on with the radar cruise control because it's not going to shift gears for you. And I'm on my way to lunch, so I'm going to summarize this vehicle real quick as we pull into lunch. And it is kind of what I expected. It's just very smooth, much quieter Honda Civic Si with nicer materials, a heads-up display, fully digital screen, heated seats, and this is on the top of line package, mind you, coming around 37K. I'll put exactly what the price tiers are on, on the screen for you. The manual transmission in here is excellent as long as you're okay with being patient rowing through the gears as it doesn't like to be hustled that much, especially with the rev hang. 
but the auto rev matching downshifts are so fun and satisfying. I'm gonna get on the brakes heavy here because this is where I'm turning. <laughs> and I'm going to take a right here. The handling is really good. I don't know if I can say it's, it's, it's as dialed in as the Civic SI's is, uh, but it feels really good in here. And that could just be because the Civic SI's that I've driven all have the Performance Summer Ties tire option. I'm happy that Acura kept the weight down on here as much as possible while still giving us nicer materials, a, a, a nicer ride quality as well, and more technology features on top of the Civic Si to boot. But how this vehicle's equipped is probably set eight grand or so more than the Civic Si. And if you're just into performance, then that car is probably going to be the better pick. But if you're into a better riding vehicle, a more comfortable vehicle, better materials, a better looking vehicle, but that's subjective. I mean, I think that the SI does look really good, but this Integra, I think, looks a little bit better, especially from the front end. I think it looks real nice. And I, ha I can't believe I haven't even mentioned this as the helical limited slip, slip diff on this uh, six-speed manual A-spec technology package. Definitely put it to good use back there in the turns when I was going through the hills. I just can't help to feel that I want a little bit more power from this vehicle and that Type S is going to be the answer for us. We just don't have any information or confirmation technically at this point that there'll be a Type S, but there better be. And man, I feel like this is a great vehicle to start with, just like the Civic is as well, based on the same platform and I can't wait to see this vehicle out on the streets, out in the customer's hands, because it has been a long time since we've had the Integra, and it's back, it's a beautiful car, it's well-appointed, it's well-priced, but I'm just salivating for more power because I know this vehicle wants it just as much as I do. But anyways, I'm gonna end it there. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, my first hands-on impressions of the all new Integra. Man, it's been a long time coming. I'm glad it's back on the market, but I'm gonna pull into the lunch spot, have a nice tasty meal, and then get back into this car, as well as drive the CVT model, uh, and enjoy the rest of my time here in Austin, Texas. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, smash the heck out of the like button for the Integra, the return. It's here, guys. Thank you so much. I'll catch you. I need to cut myself off. That's a good spot for interior B-roll. And then Sofian's over here uh, doing his walk around with his nicely cladded white A-spec performance model over there. But I think I'm actually going to pull off right here. And, oh, that's like a huge ditch. Oh, this is beautiful, though. <laughs> and settle it in. With this interior shot, we're going to get some nice shots here and then head up to lunch. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Catch you